we are going to start this tree tutorial with the pine tree that I paint most often and I like to call it a blobby tree and that's because it is formed by basically using a bunch of different blobs on a trunk and so it's um, one of my favorite kind of loose styles to paint and it helps to loosen up your wrist and kind of lean into the abstract nature of loose watercolors. So first, you can use a multitude of different brushes. Uh, for the first demonstration, I'm gonna use this silver brush, which is a combination natural and synthetic paintbrush. So it has a little bit more of a looser feel and it's also uh, a fairly large one, but because it's a professional paintbrush and has this tip right here, I can still use the tip of this paintbrush to get really thin strokes for my trunk, which is what I want. So uh, for the first demonstration of this blobby tree, I'm just going to paint the trunk of my pine tree. Um, starting from the bottom, you can start from the bottom or from the top, but using very little pressure, I'm just gonna paint a thin line here for the trunk of this blobby pine tree. And then I'm gonna start from the top and I'm going to paint blobs on either side of this pine tree. And uh, I'm going quick because uh, going quick is kind of an easy way to be fast and loose in my opinion. Um, but you can also go slow and be a little bit more meticulous about where you paint the blobs, but I think that one of the reasons I like this blobby technique so much is because it looks kind of messy, and I think that nature is supposed to look messy. It's supposed to look not perfect, not even, and so when I force myself to go fast, then I feel like I can capture that kind of messy, rugged feeling better. So I'm gonna show you that again, a little slower, just because I know you might not be able to go quite as fast as me. And I'm gonna do it one more time with this silver brush, and then I'm gonna do it another time with a small size zero brush because I often do it with that size brush also. So. Uh, so I have this trunk, and even if I don't have all of the trunk, the line of my trunk has some spaces in it, that's okay because the pine needles are going to uh, mostly cover it up, and even if they don't, this is supposed to be a loose watercolor pine tree, right? So uh, on either side, as you can see, I'm just kind of tapping my paintbrush so that I can get some blobs there. and. Just a minute, I'm going to zoom in so you can see just a little bit better. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just tapping my paintbrush so that I can get these blobs and uh, putting them on either side all the way down. And I'm for this pine tree, I'm getting just a little bit thicker uh, in my blob so that the pine tree is more like a triangle kind of shape. But you can also stop about right here and let the trunk be bare. That is one way that pine trees show up as well. So that is uh, with, those two versions were with this size 10 silver brush that I have. And then I'm gonna do one version with a size zero Utrecht synthetic say what. Actually, this is a size one, but you can also do it with size zero. So um, this is just a small detail brush and it's gonna be the same method, but it might be easier if you're just starting and you don't know where to start with painting trees like this, it might be easier to start with a smaller detail brush just because you can control the blobs a little bit better. But it's kind of up to you because I think that starting with a bigger, more natural brush helps lean into the imperfect aesthetic. Um, but the smaller brush might feel com more comfortable. So I don't know, either way, the smaller brush, it's a little trickier to get the large blobs, mostly because if you just like plopped your paintbrush, your small paintbrush down like that, you would just get a vertical line. And so you kind of need to push around your paintbrush in order to get the blobs. One of the, the ways that I like to do that is to kind of like flick my paintbrush up like that. 
as I'm painting the blobs. So like on either side, I just kind of flick it so that it moves the paint and creates these blobs. And also the flick can uh, act like pine needles as well. So that is how I paint these blobby pine trees. And it's also important to note that I taught myself how to do this in part by watching other people and then taking what I learned from them and experimenting with my own methods, experimenting with my own grip, experimenting with how I moved my paintbrush, experimented with different paintbrushes. And so it's this pine trees are definitely one of the ways where I taught myself by watching, but I have come into my own kind of unique style that might be similar to others, but is definitely mine because of the way that I formed these trees. So that is my uh, method for these blobby pine trees. Next, let's take a look at a different method of pine trees. It's still kind of an abstract loose method, but it's using slightly different hand uh, brush movements. So instead of blobby, this method is called the lines technique. And the way that I form these trees is first I form the pine, tr the trunk of the tree. Uh, very similar to how I did the blobby, just a thin line. But then using thin brush strokes, but thin but wild brush strokes all the way across, I um, put these lines all the way across the trunk and go down. And note that as I'm painting these lines, they aren't all straight across. Some of them are crisscrossing. They're not all even. Some of the bunches are, you know, thicker than others. And I'm also, I'm gonna, usually when I do the lines technique, in order to make the pine trees look a little bit more full, I go up and down multiple times just so that I can really capture um, the wildness, I guess, of pine trees. So I, two or three times I go up and down using the, making these crisscross lines across. And I'm again using my size 10 silver brush using, but I'm holding it like almost at the end of the handle so that I can get, use very little pressure. It's like I'm barely even touching my paintbrush to the paper while I'm painting these lines. And that's so that I can get these really thin hairlines, like almost wispy that almost disappear into the paper. And that is another easy way to paint a pine tree. Similarly, you can paint a loose pine tree with this method, again, with a size, with a smaller brush. So this is a size one. You can also use size zero. Um, just note that you the difference in pressure from the between the silver brush and the smaller brush uh, it's the way that you handle the brush is going to be a little bit different so like where with the silver brush in order to get the thin strokes i held the handle almost like at the end so i was like just barely like dropping the brush using the smaller brush i need to control it a little bit better to have those um, thin lines. And so I'm holding it a little bit closer and I'm holding it, I'm still holding it almost perpendicular to the paper though. So um, that's just a, a little, a small difference between the size brush that I'm using. And there's no right or wrong way really to paint, to paint these. If you decide you have a different method that you like better, um, I definitely encourage you to go for it because as I said, the way that I've learned to paint these trees is by practicing and learning from other people and then honing the methods and experimenting to find something that feels more like uniquely me. So, and then I'm just actually going to stop here and paint a little, just a few little things coming down on the trunk just to show you what it looked like if we decided to stop this pine tree at the trunk just like that. So that is the an easy way to paint a pine tree using just lines. 
Now I'm going to talk about how to paint a tree that is a bare tree that might would normally be deciduous so it might normally have leaves but in the winter time it's bare uh these kinds of trees were always really tricky for me because i never knew where to put the lines but i'm gonna tell you that that's kind of the point just to put the lines wherever so first things first it's important to start with the trunk because these bare trees usually have like one long branch or one long trunk right and so we're going to start from the bottom and paint one side of the trunk make it a little thicker at the bottom but then get thinner as you're moving upward and make sure to add some movement uh so that it's not like a straight line so you have a little jerks a little uh, slight movement in here just so it's like the tree is almost like bending in the wind has it's not, it's not round, but it's not straight either, just with a little like some crooked movement in there. And then we're going to form the other part of the trunk uh, on the other side. And we're going to meet the trunk, but we're still gonna be thin, right? And then separate and form another side of this thin tree over here. So, and then before I move on, I'm just gonna fill in the rest of this trunk like that. And so now that we have um, the full trunk and a couple of these branches, I'm just gonna keep forming these very thin branches starting in the trunk and using very thin lines that still have this kind of wavery movement to it the lines are kind of shaky, right? And um, sometimes I'm even going to form branches on these other branches that I have and always using these very, very thin lines. And that is how to make a really easy bare, like wintry, deciduous tree. Okay, now let's talk about how to paint a full leafy green tree that's more of like a deciduous tree. So I'm going to start with some hookers green and I'm using a size six round brush and I'm going to start with some green pigment and then I'm just gonna use some water and these round brush strokes so I'm like making a circular kind of like a half circle almost kind of brush stroke around this pigment that I made just with water to uh, expand the pigment. And, as, and then I'm gonna take some more hookers green and um, keep painting into the tree with these like half circle jaggedy kind of brush strokes, making sure to leave some white space in there and i don't always have to go in this direction in that direction i can go in the other another direction over here using that same those same circular brush strokes but i'm just making sure to alternate between using pigment so using the paint and washing off the paint and just using water to encourage the paint to move in the water and create this cool uh, like watercolory kind of texture where some parts of the tree are darker and some parts of the tree are lighter. So, um, and then you're just gonna kind of build the layers of these leaves in that way. And once you are fairly satisfied, it doesn't have to be like fully round, it can I would in fact recommend to make trees look more natural, to give them kind of imperfections, make it maybe look more like a head of broccoli than, um, than like a fully round tree. Once you feel like that's pretty good, then you can go back in with some darker meaning, uh, he more heavy, more dense pigment, and just add in some shading along the bottoms of some of the clumps. So just to show that like, uh, if the sun is coming on top of here, then it's gonna be darkest, the shadows are gonna be darkest along the bottom. 
but we still want to leave some of these spaces light to have that nice fun watercolory texture and again this is loose this is this is a loose watercolor method so it does not have to be perfect by any means this is mostly just to have fun once you have formed the leaves so the the main part of this tree then uh pick up some brown i'm using burnt umber here and uh just form i want this to be like a big tree so i'm just gonna form the trunk using a few light strokes um, I, I'm not even going to fill in the trunk all the way, but I'm starting from the bottom and filling in the branches of the trunk one at a time. And maybe the bottom of the trunk I'll have kind of the roots forming over this leafy portion. But then notice how I'm leaving some white spaces in between these branches here. And that's just to show that there are different branches of this tree, right? This is a pretty big tree, so... Um, and I'm going to have like maybe a, a larger branch coming out over here and uh, just giving some support for this big tree that we have painted here. So the key to painting branches, maybe I'm going to have the trunk be a little bit thicker right here. The key to painting branches is to start from the trunk and then kind of meet the part of the leaf that you want to find. And so it's thinner toward here as it goes to the leaf and thicker down toward the trunk. And it doesn't have to look perfect. It doesn't have to look, you know, like it's in a fairy tale. I think that the more um, imperfect and kind of chunky and wild the trunk looks and the tree in general, the cooler it's going to be. Another thing that you could do here uh, just to finish this tree is in between some of the leaves, the bunches of leaves here, you could paint uh, just little tiny branches that are showing how all the leaves are connected. And you don't have to do it with all of them necessarily, uh, but just painting little branches in between to show that this tree is, that the, the tree is connected to the trunk down there. Again, that's not necessary but sometimes it can be a fun little detail. So that is the full leafy green tree. A pretty loose and a pretty easy leafy green tree that I think are really fun to paint. And then finally, we're gonna use a very similar method to paint a tree that is more like an autumn tree. So I'm gonna start uh, my leaves with some yellow ochre paint and I think I'm gonna have a few different colors so I'm probably gonna just use yellow ochre and scarlet lake but I'm gonna start with yellow ochre and do the same thing that I did with the green leafy tree these circular motions and alternating between the circular motions and uh, alternating the circular motions with using pigment and uh, using water so that we can form this full tree and give it that nice cool watercolory texture. And then once I have some of the yellow ochre, I'm gonna pick up some Scarlet Lake and do the same thing. And it's okay if the colors blend right into each other because that's actually the effect that we want, right? So I'm gonna pick up some of the Scarlet Lake, maybe put it over here, and now I'm gonna take some yellow ochre, and it's just a dance between, between the two, between the two pigments, and then using water to extend the pigments and emphasize that watercolory texture that we like a lot. So I'm gonna do one more round of Scarlet Lake. And then I'm also gonna go back in and add some Scarlet Lake along some of the bottoms here. And maybe 
maybe just a little bit more yellow ochre along the top. Okay, so we have uh, the leafy part of this fall leaf tree. And now let's go ahead and add the trunk. And so I'm gonna start here and just form the branches of this trunk one at a time. It's okay if the brown blends into the leaves like it's doing right now. That's called the wet on wet technique, right? And uh, I think that having those color buns can actually just make the texture even more fun and um, embrace this loose style. And then I'm going to add some more branches in between. And you don't have to do branches in between for all of the white spaces. I mean, you can if you want, but it's not really necessary. Usually I alternate between doing one or two or three little branches, little prongs on my branches. So that's something to keep in mind. And then just to finish off this kind of fall autumn tree, because autumn leaves are famous for falling, we're going to um, use a fun splatter technique to just splatter on some paint. Uh, so I'm splattering on some of the Scarlet Lake paint and then I'm going to splatter on some yellow ochre. I, I'm splattering just by like tapping my paintbrush that has pigment and so some of these leaves look like they're falling. And if you'd prefer to have like a less messy method, you can also just manually paint in some leaves that are falling. And by leaves, I'm just kind of painting jaggedy kind of blobs in both the yellow ochre and the Scarlet Lake. And that will kind of give this tree a fun, loose fall effect. And that wraps up my video on five easy ways to paint trees. So we talked about two kinds of pine trees using blobby um, techniques and using lines. And then we painted a bare tree. And then we painted these two full trees that are full of leaves. I hope that this YouTube video was helpful for you. If you decide that you wanna try painting trees using these methods, I would love to see if you're on Instagram, make sure to tag me. My handle is this writing desk. And if you wanna see more tutorials like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. See you next time.